Easy people, welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. Uh, morning time. I'm just recording this early, busy again. Um, yesterday went to London for the big six watch along Arsenal, Tottenham. Uh, it was absolutely crazy. I don't know if any of you guys have subscribed to the big six channel, but you need to watch that watch along. Six lads in a room, Tottenham, Arsenal, United, City. It was carnage. And, um, it's breaking all the numbers. It's breaking all the, the numbers for watch-alongs. I think yesterday on the way home, it had done something like 112,000 in like two hours. So, yeah, buzzing with that. Got myself a little cappuccino. It's been a busy few weeks. Um, talking about the game. Saturday, Brentford at home. Another win. Another three points. To be honest... I don't think any of us expected any less. You know, the way we've started this season, um, we expected the three points, but we always know, like we said on the match preview, that Brentford can be a tough test for us at the Etihad. And uh, one minute into the game, um, it proved why. You know, we, we, we're underneath at the, uh, the beginning, the team comes out, and I'm not a big fan of, of, of rotation early on in the season for me. Um, I get it. He wants to give people games. He wants to get people up to speed. We've got Inter Milan coming up. We've got Watford coming up in the cup. We've got Arsenal. I get it. Um, but the back four of uh, Kyle Walker on the right, Rico on the left, um, Akanji and Stones didn't look the strongest to me. On paper, it's a great back four. But we know that the back four we've been playing, Akanji, Diaz, Guardiola and Rico has been looking slick. It's been looking solid and it's been looking efficient, you know, coming out from the back. Um, all I can describe the goal as is pandemonium. You know what I mean? They, they put it on us early doors. There was a few mistakes in there. John Stones and people getting in each other's way. Bang, Brentford 1-0. Um, and sometimes against... Sitter at the Etihad, if you score early, it's a bad move because it tends to wake us up a little bit. It tends to wake us up a little bit. Um, and it did that. Do you know what I mean? I've got to say, um, the Viking again, Erling Brout, is having an unbelievable season. Lots of people were coming up to me saying, hat-trick again for Earl today. Do you think hat-trick again? And, and you know what? It's unheard of, like, to talk like that at football games, you know what I mean? You, I remember the days under Stuart Pearce, he used to come up to you and go, do you think we'll score today? Do you think we'll score today? You know what I mean? We had Darius Vassell and Andy Cole up front. I think we got nine goals all season at home. And then you look at this guy, he scored nine goals in three games, you know what I mean? So we are spoiled and he did deliver again. Um, it was great. Uh, first goal, you know, City were attacking well. I've got to say that, a lot of people said to me they thought Gundogan got caught a couple of times in possession. I think he did. I think you are right. He did get caught a couple of times in possession. But so many times in the game, Gundogan dropped deep quick and spun the ball off. Exactly what we miss when Rodri's not there. And I thought he always wanted the ball, Ilkay. He wasn't hiding from it. And I thought he played well, to be honest. He got caught in the middle a couple of times. And against better opposition, maybe we'd get punished for that. But I thought Ilkay Gundogan did well. I think I thought he's eased himself back into it. And um, I was impressed with him. But another one I was impressed with, really impressed with, was Savinio. I feel like we've got a little gem on our hands. I feel like he gets the ball. We know he's going to be frustrating. He's a young kid. We know that. Jeremy on the other side, we've seen it last season, is exactly the same. But I feel like Savinio causes big problems. They can't touch him. And I think when he when he learns a little bit more about the Premier League, the fact he runs at pace, he's going to get so many penalties and he's going to get so many uh, fouls because he's just direct. There was one run there in the second half where he cut in from the right-hand side and he danced across the edge of the box like King Cladsey used to do. And then he put it just over the bar and I thought if he'd have scored that, it reminded me of King Cladsey to be fair the way he used to tiptoe across the edge of the box and nobody could touch him. So, Savinio, again, impressive. Um, but we've got to say a word for Haaland. Do you know what I mean? He's had a tough, tough week. Real tough week. He's lost his friend, his uncle. 
Um, the club had given permission to miss the game if he wanted to. Um, he's obviously got a lot of emotion running around in his head, but he's a football man. He's on a great run. He's playing week in, week out. He's probably thought, you know what, best way to go and get this out of my system is to go and play. And, and he got the first goal. He got us back in it. It was a great snapshot. Um, that's what you, you get with Erling Haaland. He might not touch the ball for a while. He might not be involved in the build-up play, but anything drops in and around that box and, he, and it's in striking distance, it's in. He gets us back in 1-1. And then I was saying it, I had my dad with me in the crowd and I was saying to him uh, most of the first half, I'd love to see Edison put it on this centre-back. He doesn't look comfortable with, with Ireland. And then literally minutes after saying that, Edison with a long ball down the field, Harlan with a little bump off and then gets one-on-one. -on -one. And I don't know whether he's taking the piss, but his new finish of the season seems to be this chip over his shoulder. Um, I thought he'd overtouched it and he'd done too much. And the goalie was literally on him. And I thought he's, he's closed the angle down Flecken and uh, he's not going to do it. But he early dug it out of his feet, dinked it over him. 2-1. Great goal. Great finish. Um, and Flecken's a good goalkeeper. I really like him. The Brentford goalkeeper is a good one. I really like him. I've seen him a few times last season and, and, and I like him, but you can't do anything about that. That flick over the finish, as a goalkeeper, I don't think you're expecting that. You expect him to go low. You expect him to go through your legs. You put it to the side. So you're setting your body up to spread yourself. Then all of a sudden, it's dinked over your shoulder. It might look easy because it's up here, but there's no way. It's not easy at all. Um, so 2-1. And then, it, listen, it was job done then. You know what I mean? City were in control. We had three or four good chances to, to finish the game off. Haaland hit the post second half. Um, but we didn't look troubled then after that. I felt like we controlled the game. It's a word we've used most of the season, control. We controlled the game. We got the job done. And, um, yeah, three points. And we got a roll on uh, Inter Milan this week. So I'm going to touch on the Inter Milan game. You know what I mean? It's the first time we've played them since Istanbul. Um, they are a good side. They played Monza last night. I don't know how they got on. They were nil-nil for late in the game. So I'll have to check on that result. Um, but we've got to start this Champions League uh, as we mean to go on. It's a league league stage. We've got to get the points on the board. Uh, be interesting to see the team selection ahead of Arsenal at weekend. Um, I think Erling's going to play. I think Jeremy Doku and that got rested, so they might start. Ruben Diaz is going to start. Bernardo is going to start. Foden might even start. You know what I mean? He was on the bench. Rodri, again, might even start. So this is what I might see uh, happening against Inter Milan. We need the lads up to speed for Arsenal, so it'd be good to get 90 minutes under the belt of Rodri and Foden, etc., if we can play them. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, today is Monday. Um, the 16th of September, and today the trial starts. Manchester City against the Premier League. Uh, had a bit of banter this morning, put a picture of Lord Panic up, done a bit of Smith's tunes to it and that, Panic on the streets of London, just to get a few people rattled and annoyed before breakfast. It's always good. And at the end of the day, people, the whole world, the whole world outside Manchester City is praying that Manchester City are guilty. Is praying they've got something. Because the fact is, if Manchester City get found innocent of all of these charges, or we get fined for failure to produce evidence, or whatever you want, these go away. And then these people have got to stand there and look in the mirror and realise how good Manchester City Football Club is. And they're going to have to take a step back and watch all these achievements and think, fair play. But they won't. They won't. They'll say, you paid them off. You've done this. You've done that. We know that shit. Been dealing with it for the last 12 months. Pathetic. But, you know, it's going to be very, very interesting. I feel like the media are going to start campaigns. I feel like all sorts are going to come out in the wash. I feel like Manchester City against the world mentality, like we did the treble season, when um, I feel like it, we've all got to pull together now, you know? We've all got to pull together, get get this get this um, togetherness back that we did for the treble season where we literally didn't care about anyone. Fuck the world. We're Man City. We do what we want. Get the lads on the pitch playing the football. Get the people in the stands behind the team. 
Um, don't let anyone divide us. Don't let any rival fans rattle anyone. And just basically get on about the business and let the lawyers do the talking. We're only supporters at the end of the day. We're supporters. You know, I'm not on trial. You're not on trial. The club is going to clear its name against the Premier League allegations. So it's down to the Premier League now to go out there and prove that these charges that they're bringing against us are correct. And then Manchester City will prove otherwise. It's as simple as that, people. Let the lawyers do the work. Let the people talk the talk. Manchester City are keeping walking the walk. While they're too busy focusing on Sky Sports News, hoping that something breaks at the trial, we're smashing their teams all over the park. Pep's got our boys well and truly drilled. Do you know what I mean? So we know what we need to do. Let's just ignore the noise outside. Get in our Manchester City bubbles. Get behind the lads. A lot of games coming up. And get to the stadium. Support the boys if you can. I know it's expensive. I've seen a, a lot of disgruntled City fans talking about the ticket prices. And it does feel at the minute like literally these these, these games come in every five minutes and, and, and it's so expensive. You know, I speak to people who've got children or OAPs who, who are struggling. And um, yeah, it's expensive hobby football. It is. If if I was um if I was drinking and, and going to the games and having a beer, there's no way I'd be able to do all the games. I'm literally doing this media work um with the big six and etc. just to pay for my expensive hobby, to be honest. And um there's some people out there that can't, they've got a nine to five, they've got a couple of kids who who want to go and see early in Harland and that. It's two two hundred quid by the time you you you've 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 been to the game and bought you know some food, etc. So I do sympathise with it. I do sympathise with it. I feel like the club, especially for the Carabao Cup uh, games, them kids for the quid nights and stuff like that. I know West Ham do that still. I seen it when I was at West Ham. So maybe City could do something like that. Watford is an ideal opportunity for people that can't get to a Premier League game to get down there and watch the boys. So we'll see. We'll see. But I feel like they might be... Um, a few disgruntled fans soon with, with with the cost of tickets and that. That's another battle we're going to have to have. Um, but other than that, uh, I don't know what you think about Brentford, man of the match. I give it to Savino. I thought he was outstanding. I feel like a Kanji again. He's just doing his business. He's turned into a quality, quality centre-back. But I feel like the Akanji Stones centre-back is not as solid as uh, Diaz and Akanji. Um, there's a few fans messaging me saying that they feel like Walker and Stones have, are starting to decline. Um, I don't know. I mean, naturally, age, uh, a lot of football the guys have played. Um, I feel like with Rico coming in, you've got a young guy and an old guy fighting for right back now. I think a lot of fans are leaning towards the younger, fresher approach. I feel with John Stones, I think John Stones offers something a little bit different to Ruben Diaz and Akanja stepping into midfield, etc. I feel like Stones has had a few injuries this season. He just needs to get fitness. I think if uh, Pep can manage him well, then get him up to speed. I feel Stones will be all right. I do personally think that Kyle Walker, this might be his last season. I feel like with Rico Lewis emerging, uh, I think a lot of City fans, especially Pep, looks like he's confident in Rico to do that right-back role. I don't understand the left-back Rico Lewis. Um, I don't think he looked comfortable at all. I felt, I felt like he looked like a duck out of water there. We've got Guardiola there, we've got Ake there, so I think we're all right. But other than that, uh, we know Gundogan's a quick fix. There's only a couple of seasons left in Ilkay. Kevin De Bruyne started the season really well, um, but we know he's getting to the later stages. But listen, City made a few quid. We've got a big, big war chest of money available. They will pick the right people to replace certain people. I know people don't want to talk about it, but it's going to happen. You know, El Chaviri is coming in in January from River Plate. He's playing regular over there. He's going to, is he going to be up to speed for the Premier League? I don't know, but he's a good option. They've got a lot of uh, faith in him. They think he's going to be a great player. So that's one to watch. Um, but we just got to keep doing what we're doing. It's a massive game against Arsenal on Sunday. You're going to see some Arsenal previews this week. You're going to see a Lad Bible video drop with me in Turkish. Agree to disagree. Um, we have done a few. The Big Six did a Back Your Chat, which is in uh, Shoreditch in London, where Arsenal fans were invited to come and debate against me. That Because I said Manchester City are a bigger club than Arsenal. 
do believe that. I do believe we've overtook Arsenal now. I feel like everything unique Arsenal did on the pitch has been overtook and overshadowed by Manchester City. Yet they've got an invincible trophy. Well done for winning the league. Uh, but we've won four in a row. We've won the Centurions. We've won the treble. You know, we've won... Um, We've won loads of unique things in the in the game now. But Manchester City will always be remembered for, and Arsenal haven't. It's a numbers game now. They're just another team we're chasing down numbers wise. Take away the charity shields, and 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 the numbers of Arsenal are, are, are get, are, we're getting closer. So I feel like you know you look in the history books at unique things in football that Manchester City have done, and look at the unique things in football Arsenal have done, and Manchester City are blowing them apart. And can you really, really be classed as a big club if you've never won the Champions League? Because that's what we were told as Manchester City fans for all them years. They'll never be a big club until you win the Champions League. Well, we won it and we won the treble and we won the Super Cup and we won the World Club Cup and we've won four in a row and we've done Centurions and we've done Formidables and we've got the greatest ever Premier League moment of all time, Sergio Aguero. So watch it. It's interesting. It's very interesting. There's a lot of Arsenal fans stuck in the past, stuck in an Arsenal-shaped bubble, uh, who don't want to, uh, you know, admit what that Manchester City are bigger and what Manchester City have become. You know what I mean? We're a monster. We're keeping on rolling. We're moving. We're, we're progressing. I was at the stadium at weekend. The new uh, hotel development thing is unbelievable. Never seen anything like it. Can't believe how fast it's being built. You've got the co-op live now. Uh, opening doors to City fans pre-match. They had a DJ in there, wingman and all that, doing tunes and getting extra revenue for the club. So City are ahead of the curve, man. They're ahead of the curve. They know what they're doing. They're trying to get the match day revenue up and, uh, yeah, it's looking good. But anyway, three points on the board. Three point collectors. Manchester City, two. Brentford, one. Another three points. We've got Inter Milan this week. And then we've got the big one. Arsenal at home. Look out for some previews. Please subscribe to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. Hit the like button. It really does help the algorithm. Any of your friends that don't know about me or my channel, please, please, please pass it on to them. And uh, we're building a good little community here, a good little um, space where we can talk about Manchester City. So to be honest, leave a comment, leave a question, etc. I read them all. I'll always like it. If I read it, I like all the messages and I'll, uh, I'll reply to the ones I can. Big up, Blues. Have a great week. Don't worry too much about the charges. It's all in hands. Lord Panic and the boys are there now at court, having a cappuccino, like me, having a sip of the Premier League tears and getting ready to win the case. Up the Blues. Come on, City.